So hello, and uh, your Bio 212 um, Anatomy and Physiology 2. We're looking at Chapter 20, which is the cardiac circulatory responsibilities for the heart. And what I want to do is I want to spend about, I don't know, two, five minutes on coronary circulation. Um, and what this means is, I mean, aside from the fact that they're not going to confuse anybody here. Let's go like this. Here's our heart. Here's our heart. Our right atria, our right ventricles. And by now, you've probably wrapped your brain around the fact that let's change color here. Blue, we actually have three locations that blood can travel into the right atria that do not have valves that regulate the movement into the atria. All right, so we're going to have superior vena cava, SVC. SVC, inferior vena cava, IVC, All right? And then also we have the coronary sinus, which is at here. It's a little hole, okay? That's going to be significant in a moment. There's that, right? And then, of course, you remember that blood exits out of the right ventricle to travel to the lungs via the pulmonary trunk, but remember these ultimately become pulmonary arteries, right? So PA, this is a portal system. PA, pulmonary arteries. Changing color. Remember, blood returns to, and you're going to notice I'm drawing a specific number of these now, returns to traveling underneath, but not into the, so it's going to return, so I'm going to put one, two, three, four, we actually have pulmonary veins, PV. And notice the color I'm drawing them in. Yay, so you all got that, right? Pulmonary vein returns the oxygen, I mean, oxygenated blood to the left atria. And now remember, we're going to go through bicuspid valve here. Yay, we're going to move into this space. And then we're going to send blood out through the aortic semilunar valve, and that's where our story begins here, okay? Our story begins because it, there is an opening just on the other side of the aortic semilunar valve that will allow for us to begin the coronary circulatory system, because that means we are now going to build a network of its own blood vessels coronary branches from the ascending aorta, and these anastomoses are going to cause collateral circuits. And collateral circuits means if I have one capillary bed here, I have another capillary bed close enough that if it ever gets blocked, this one's diffusion should be able to support it for a period of time. You also have coronary veins, right? And what this means is that everything is going to drain to the area of lowest pressure. So let me change color here. Lowest pressure. And that coronary sinus drains into that right atria using that structure right there. And you'll see why this is so important. Okay. Let's get rid of this cartoon. Part of the reason why I'm making this one really small video for people is to help people understand how to look at this inside your textbook. If you're using Torterra and Derrickson, uh, yeah, Derrickson, you're going to see that this cartoon, uh, it's figure 20.08, I believe, right? Or 28.8. And you're going to see that you actually have coming out underneath the oracles here, that right and left branches of the coronary arteries. Simultaneously, you're going to see as well, traveling with that, the right and the left coronary veins. And literally, they are adjacent to one another. I try to show that to you here by sort of the coloration patterns. What I want you to see, and what I'm hoping you're going to appreciate here, is in the same cartoon, they're trying to show you how the vessels wrap around. So the deeper blue on the anterior surface here versus the muted blue in the back. That's literally the posterior surface of the heart. Likewise, the deeper red here is the anterior surface and the sort of off-white red that you see as if you were looking through the heart 
is what you see on the posterior aspect. And they use this to, as a naming mechanism, right? I think it causes a lot of confusion. But if you were to draw the front or the back of the heart, let's say, let's just stick with the front. Here's that interventricular sulcus here, right? And that you can see that you actually have the anterior interventricular branch of the coronary artery traveling there. And therefore, you actually have the great cardiac vein. They leave out the words. I don't know why they're doing that, okay? Great cardiac vein that travels to the apex. And here you can see that traveling there. Likewise, back here, you can see that coronary sinus. Okay, that's actually really important because that's where all the blood's going to leave to in that posterior aspect. Notice it's enlarged. That's what Mother Nature is doing. She's creating an area of lower pressure to make sure all of the now deoxygenated blood can be returned to the right atria. Good place to stop.